Hello and welcome into End on a Make. Uh, my name is Dustin, and today I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, P.J. Tucker and the Houston Rockets agreeing to part ways. Uh, he's just the, the latest player in a string of them that have have kind of announced this intention to separate. Um, so I just want to talk about it a little bit because it is the most recent one. It's funny, I was going to do a video that was all about LaMarcus Aldridge and the Spurs with this whole situation last night because that just was announced Wednesday night. And didn't get the chance, was busy with my normal job, all that stuff, and was like, okay, well, I'll do it today. And I'm really glad I didn't, because now this comes out uh, basically right before the Rockets tipped off against the Kings tonight. They announced that P.J. Tucker was going to just step away from the team. He's upset with his role. He was a healthy scratch tonight, um, partially because of that frustration. And this basically was like... The culmination of everything and they were like okay so he's gonna leave the team and we're gonna find a trade partner or we're going to and eventually buy him out if you don't find the trade partner um he's been averaging career lows pretty much across all of his important things so like points per game three point percentage and rebounds are all super low which is not what you want from a player who's basically there to be like that three and d type of swing man and you know before we get into that, I just want to talk a little bit about Steven Silas, who is coaching the Rockets this year. I really, really feel bad for him. I hope that this doesn't like ruin his chances going forward to teach another team or teach another team, coach another team, because, you know, this is not this is like a perfect storm of things you don't want to happen when you're a first year head coach. So he goes from Dallas, where he's orchestrating their emergent, high-powered offense with Luka Doncic. Porzingis was, you know, he was hurt on and off, but still, you know, utilizing him the right way. Seth Curry, all those players that they had that they were, you know, running up and down the court on, and they, they look great. So he comes, he gets the job in Houston that nobody really wanted in the first place because Mike D'Antoni gets fired, Daryl Morey gets fired. There's all these rumors about the players not wanting to play for owner Tillman Fertitta. And it just was it just seemed like it was gonna be a powder keg. It seemed like it was not gonna be good. So Steven Silas gets hired. Russell Westbrook gets traded for John Wall. James Harden just doesn't show up because he doesn't want to be there anymore. On and off you have all the COVID stuff. And then since the season started, they traded James Harden. They've had a ton of injuries. They brought in Victor Oladipo, who they've been careful with his injuries as well, and who's turned down a contract extension from them already. It is clear that he wants to either hit free agency or be traded uh, before the deadline at the end of March. And it's just one thing after another after another for Steven Silas. And I just feel bad. I feel like it's, you know, this could be the type of thing that prevents him from getting another job after this. Like, say they let him go after a year or two. And, you know, this could this could really make it hard for him in the future. And I don't, I don't think that's fair. I think that sucks. Uh, so I just wanted to say that really quick. Um, and on top of everything... They lose to the Kings to the night, tonight, and they have now lost 14 straight games, which is it's just crazy when you think about, you know, how many regular – like how dominant they've been in the regular season uh, the past years with, you know, obviously with Westbrook, Harden, you know, Chris Paul and Harden, those different iterations. Uh, but now Peach, – so P.J. Tucker, um, this whole like agreeing to part ways so you send him away from the team – is just a really weird concept to me because to me like when that announcement gets made like hey we've agreed to part ways like when you see like an Andre Drummond is like Cleveland and Andre Drummond have agreed to part ways that to me means he's not going to get traded because teams know if they just wait it out he's going to get bought out because they've agreed to part ways now and so I think like like that really diminishes what you might see teams willing to part with to get him. And I think it just is a matter of time before eventually he gets bought out and hits that market. And obviously, you know, he wants to go to a contender is the whole thing. And there's a few teams that I think he could really fit on. Um, obviously, you know, I'm going to say Brooklyn because it seems like they're just acquiring everybody right now, every big free agent. Uh, the Pistons bought out Blake Griffin, and within a day he was – in Brooklyn, he had basically agreed to go to Brooklyn. Um, LaMarcus Aldridge, we're going to wait and see what happens with him. Andre Drummond, there's still no word. The Cavs are still pretty convinced that they can hang on to him and trade him for something. 
Uh, so we'll see how long you know they hold out on that as it gets closer to the deadline. Uh, but for P.J. Tucker, I think the market is going to be pretty hot. He's the type of player that a lot of teams – you know, really want. He's the type of player they value. He's that 3 and D wing guy that you can put in the corner. He's going to strengthen your front court defense and rebounding because for whatever reason, he is just an unbelievable rebounder. And he's he's run small ball five for Houston. And I know that was one of the things that he was kind of unhappy about. Um, that started last year when Harden and everyone were still on the team. And it was because, you know, they traded their centers. They decided to go super small. And it, it was effective, but you know, players like P.J. Tucker and Eric Gordon really kind of got the short end of the stick. Um, so I can see where that frustration would start. But, like, to be that mad going into a new regime and a new everything is kind of, I don't know, it's kind of disappointing. I mean, I'll never know the frustration of being a pro athlete that is just stuck in a losing situation or in a rebuild. And I can understand the, you know, I don't want to be in a rebuild for the rest of my career here. I want to at least have a chance to keep competing like we have been. Um, it's just the, the agreeing to part ways is just so interesting. And I hope that it's, you know, an actual mutual agreement. And it's not just like the team telling these players, hey, go home. Hey, we don't want you here. You're distracting. Yeah, we'll find a trade for you or something eventually. Just sit tight, buddy. Um, I guess as long as the play, I don't know. It's a whole thing. But um, anyways, teams. So for teams, I think he can go to. I mean, obviously, Brooklyn is going to be interested I think you're going to hear a lot of people say the Lakers, um, which makes some sense too. The Lakers really, um, when Anthony Davis is healthy, obviously they are a entirely different level of uh, of defense. They're entirely a different tier, and we saw that in the playoffs last year, where Anthony Davis kind of you know just hit this peak that that we hadn't seen him do on such a good team before. So I think adding PJ to the mix for that for that team will improve that defense. Um, if Davis is there, it'll be a lot better, obviously. Uh, but, you know, also having someone who can hit those open corner threes is going to be a big deal for them because, you know, LeBron can get so many open looks for these guys. And part of the reason they've struggled so bad is you have, you know, Wes Matthews, KCP, and I think a couple other Lakers this year that have just been, you know, not shooting consistently. So he'd be an instant upgrade there. Um, who knows how big of a role he would have. And I'm sure that's part of, you know, his disgruntlement. But, um, you know, obviously they're the, one of the top favorites. So it's kind of hard to not want to put him there at least. Um, another one, uh, another one too, is Boston. Um, Boston just needs all the front court help they can get. I don't know what to make of it. I think he would bring a type of toughness to them that maybe they'll get back now that Marcus Smart is back. But th that team is just such a such a weird like combination of issues they have so many weird inconsistencies and moments where they look like the best team in the east and moments where they just can't figure anything out and string together a couple good possessions and you know i don't think pj tucker is the type of player that pushes them over the top but it's you know it deepens that rotation it gives them someone else that they can truly lean on to to bring fire and intensity um Similarly to them, I was kind of thinking Philly would be a good spot for him. Uh, that defense is tough already. Embiid is playing at, you know, MVP favorite level. Um, and Simmons, Ben Simmons looks good. Their defense is always tough. They've improved their scoring a lot with the moves that they've made. And I think PJ could slide right in just for more open threes, better floor spacing, and just, you know, another tough defender that you can throw out there in – in minutes to kind of rest people down the stretch of the season too. Like you can kind of get, you know, a little more rest for your embeds and your bigger, your bigger players. Um, but the, the fit that I really like where I would really like to see him go, I think is the Milwaukee bucks. And I know it sounds kind of weird, but I just really like the idea of them using him at the four and trying small ball lineups with Giannis at five. I would love to see what he can do at the center position. And I think PJ offers just enough floor spacing and defensive ability to cover, you know, cover the four that it could create some good flowing offense. I don't think that they would do it a lot because I don't know how comfortable Giannis is playing the five. But I think if you have a swing man like that, that you can consistently hit in the corners, hit at the wings. 
I think it could make a huge difference for that offense because that offense definitely gets stagnant from time to time. Um, but who knows? It could be weeks away before something happens. It c I could wake up tomorrow and be like, oh, I recorded a whole video for nothing because they just bought him out and he's going to the Clippers. I mean, I don't know. We, we will see. Um, as for the other guys, Drummond, um, he still has the same the same destinations that people have been mentioning. Um, and and really, I think that... Oh, one more thing before I get out of here. Uh, the Nets. So, with these players getting bought out, and players now, P.J. Tucker and LaMarcus Aldridge, agreeing to part ways with their team, I wonder if that gives Brooklyn, like, kind of a buyer's remorse on Blake Griffin. Not because, you know, Blake's going to be bad or anything like that. I mean, obviously, you know, Blake hasn't been the player that we've grown accustomed to over the years recently. Um, and, you know, maybe changing his playing style, maybe a different role in Brooklyn will will help resurgent, make it will help give him that resurgence, I should say. But um, I wonder if they have like a buyer's remorse, if they're like, man, we could have got maybe LaMarcus Aldridge or PJ Tucker or any any of these other guys that are, you know, but instead they left on the first person who got bought out. They went out and got Blake. And, you know, he didn't play tonight. He's coming back. Um, they said it was a knee, but I think they were saying more. It's just to, you know, get him acclimated with the team and get him up to speed. So hopefully we'll get to see what he looks like soon. Um, I know they've said it doesn't seem like KD is coming back for a while, so it's going to probably be a bit before we see that team at full strength, really. But even just dropping Blake in is going to be such an interesting thing. And I wonder if you'll start to see the Nets kind of be like, maybe we should waive someone. Maybe we should make more room. Do we have to make a trade now and get someone because we've we've used this buyout market? Um, I'm just really interested. So if we, let me know where you think PJ Tucker should go or, you know, who you think the most coveted of these of these buyout potential candidates should be. Um, just hit, hit the comments. I'll respond to any of them that come through. Um, if you watch this whole thing, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, and I think I think that's everything. So I will uh, I will see you guys soon. Thank you.